approximately 5,000 years ago, in what is today Inner Mongolia. A house at the archaeological site of Hamen Manga was filled with 97 dead bodies and, at some point, it burned down. It is one of many horrifying sites preserved in the archaeological record, and in this video, we'll explore a few of them. Just one note, however. There are a series of massacre sites and what appear to be cannibal pits dating to approximately 5000 to 4500 BC in Europe, associated with the collapse of the linear band Keramik or LBK culture, such as Talheim, Schletz, Schoenkillienstaden, and of course, Herxheim. Those sites tend to get a lot of attention, and because of that, they are not being included in this list, as I want to explore some other, somewhat lesser known, gruesome archaeological sites and brutal deaths. While most of the archaeological finds we're going to be looking at in this video are pretty chilling, our first is much more depressing more than anything else. To paraphrase the historian Peter Brown, a Roman father did not have a child, he took a child, meaning that by raising the child up in his arms it was claimed as his and thus incorporated into the family. If the father did not accept the child, they could potentially be sold, or left to die, or even killed. The Roman world had very different standards than ours. Girls reached the age of majority at 12, for example, and boys tended to be preferred. The poet Juvenal at one point wrote his pregnant wife a letter stating that if the child is a boy, to keep it, but if it is a girl, to discard it. That does not appear to be the case at our first sight, however. While the city of Ascalon is now uninhabited, it has a long history spanning from at least the early Bronze Age to at least the 1500s, although there are several settlements nearby in the present day. In the late Roman period, between the 4th and the 6th centuries, a bathhouse and a brothel was located in the city, and in 1988 the sewer beneath the bathhouse was found to contain 100 infant skeletons, leading to the name of this particular site, the Sewer of Babies. But the archaeologists were puzzled. The skeletons appeared to have nothing wrong with them, so infanticide was at first suggested, and it was assumed that these were female. DNA testing on 43 left femurs, however, resulted in the majority of the tests revealing that the skeletons tended to be male, leading to the conclusion that, as this was the site of a brothel, the male babies were, to go back to Juvenal's words, discarded, while the females were likely kept and raised for future work. Our next find is located in Ecuador and it dates to approximately the 1st century BC. Located at Salongo, a site associated with the Guangala culture, 11 people were discovered having been buried about 2100 years ago, and of those 11 skeletons, two were infants. One was around 18 months old at the time of death, and the other is estimated to have been anywhere between 6 and 9 months old. Both of these bodies were evidently buried wearing the skulls of older children. One skull belonging to a child estimated between 4 and 12 years old at their time of death, and the other skull belonging to a child estimated to be between 2 and 12. So why were these two infants buried wearing skull helmets formed from the bones of other children? Well. The archaeologists who excavated the site are not certain. It could be that it was meant for some sort of spiritual protection for the infants, or perhaps more ominously, this was part of a human sacrifice intended to placate the spirit of a nearby volcano, or that these individuals had all died due to the aftereffects of a volcanic eruption, something we have geologic evidence of from around this time. Moving over to Japan, we have a very shall we say, unique specimen. This is Sukumo 24, so-called because he is the 24th individual found at the Sukumo Shell Mound site. That site dates between about 4000 and about 2500 BC, but the skeleton of Sukumo 24 is about a thousand years later than that, with carbon dating placing the approximate age range somewhere between 1370 and 1010 BC. His skeleton has a grand total of 790 different wounds. Initially, researchers were looking for evidence of prehistoric warfare, 
but the lesions present on the skeleton are not consistent with wounds caused by blades or blunt instruments. What the marks do resemble, however, are wounds that are consistent with a shark attack. The skeleton is missing both its right leg and left hand, and it's thought that the victim was alive at the time of the attack. So given that both of these body parts are missing, this is probably what the shark managed to eat, or at least tear off. The left leg is also in a strangely inverted position for reasons that are not clear. As for what kind of shark killed this poor man, based on the location of the site, the types of wounds, and the known feeding locations, it's likely to either be a tiger shark or a white shark. Hopping back over to South America, this time to Peru, we have one of, if not the biggest mass sacrifices of children that we currently know of in the archaeological record. Located near the Pacific coast, the site of Juan Chiquito is associated with the Chimu culture, and as it contains the skeletons of 200 animals, 3 adults, and 137 children, it is one of the most grisly sites ever discovered. The ages range between 6 and 14 years old, and the skeletons are made up of both sexes, with isotope data strongly suggesting that the children came from all over the region controlled by the Jimu. Most of the skeletons show evidence of their chests having been opened, and surrounding the burial site are the remains of footprints preserved in the mud. The interpretation here being that the sacrificial victims walked to a central place before having their hearts torn out by a priest. So, what would have led to the largest sacrifice of children that we have found thus far? The Chimu culture was able to flourish due to an extensive irrigation system, and at the time of this sacrifice, circa 1475, there was a particularly violent El Nino event which induced catastrophic flooding and torrential rains, leading to environmental upheaval. The sacrifice of so many humans, something that would have consumed many resources for the Chimu, is thought to have been done in an attempt to beg the gods to stop the rains. Cannibalism is always something fun to find at an archaeological site, especially when it's more than one body. Cheddar Gorge, in the United Kingdom, is famous for the discovery of Cheddar Man, a man who dates to the 9th millennium BC who, thus far, holds the status of being the oldest nearly complete skeleton found thus far in the British Isles. But Cheddar Gorge is also home to both a deep shaft at Charterhouse Warren and Goff's Cave, both of which show evidence of cannibalism at two separate periods. Charter House Warren contains the remains of 37 men, women, and children who were killed, cut up, and eaten, with the remains being thrown into a shaft about 50 feet deep, sometime between 2200 and 2000 BC, making this the biggest site thus far known of cannibalism dating to the British Bronze Age. Although the bones show extensive cut marks, with many bones having been cracked open to reach the marrow, and most of the killing blows having come from blunt force to the head, cannibalism, especially on this scale, is unusual for the period. This has led archaeologists to theorize that, given the situation, the deliberate eating of humans by other humans might have been done in order to intimidate and terrorize others, wiping out and devouring one community to ensure that others fall in line. The cannibalism at Goff's cave, on the other hand, was probably nutritional, which contains the remains of five to seven people, possibly including a young child, estimated to be about three years old, whose remains show marks consistent with cutting and smashing in order to remove the flesh off of them. These remains date to approximately 15,000 years ago, and the skulls themselves show evidence that they were formed into drinking vessels, which would make them the earliest known vessel of that type in Europe. Now we come back to the site of Hamen Manga. This site dates to the Chinese Neolithic, and to date it is one of the best preserved sites in northern China from the period. The particular house in question here is known as F40, and the skeletons are divided into three different categories. Those in the northwest of the house are essentially complete, although there are some missing bones. The skeletons located in the eastern section of the house more or less just have their skulls and no body. And the skeletons in the remainder of the house tend to be limbs or mangled bodies in varying degrees of completeness. So what happened here? Why were 100 bodies crammed into this house? 
Well, we do know that there were no elderly people in this house, and approximately half of the bodies belong to individuals who range between the ages of 19 and 35, with the remainder belonging to younger teens and adolescents. Given that there are other sites from northern China that feature mass graves like this, it's thought that this was a mass die-off of people due to some sort of plague or another infectious disease. The house then burned down at some point, although whether that was deliberate or an accident is not known, but in the process, many of the bones were charred, and it's due to this that the bodies were covered and that they have been preserved for us to find today. Let's jump back in time a bit for the last one on this list, to about 49,000 years ago. It was at this time, in Cidron Cave, located in Spain, that a group of Neanderthals were butchered and eaten. The bodies of at least 13 individuals, who were originally thought to have been from the period of the Spanish Civil War, were discovered in the 1980s. But it was later determined that these were, in fact, Neanderthals, and they were all located in a portion of the cave aptly named the Tunnel of Bones. In total, there are three infants, three adolescent males, three adult males, and four females. We don't know for certain how these 13 individuals came to be in the Tunnel of Bones, but the interpretation of the evidence that we have available is that they were killed and then brought into the cave and subsequently butchered and then probably eaten in the same location. The bones don't show any evidence of having been attacked by animals, but they do show marks consistent with defleshing done with stone tools like knives, scrapers, and probably hand axes. There are some other bones, most belonging to red deer and some belonging to smaller mammals, but there are also several dozen stone tools. What are particularly well preserved among the remains are the mandibles, and an analysis of the teeth reveal that these individuals endured multiple periods of starvation conditions, which is able to be determined because tooth enamel grows in layers. But if nutrition is severely impacted, enamel growth either slows down or it just stops completely. So what we're possibly looking at here is a group of Neanderthals who attacked, killed, and then ate another group of Neanderthals for nutritional purposes. And just as a last honorable mention, if you go back to about 1.8 million years ago, we have the remains in Africa of a Homo habilis who was attacked by first a giant crocodile, and then if the other set of bones that was discovered in the same area belongs to the same individual, they were then attacked by some sort of big cat. Saying that must have hurt probably doesn't fully cover it.